It is a winter wonderland here at the Knight Rider Historian's headquarters. And I do feel bad, as I've said before, that the trailer has to be exposed to the cold and the snow, but I still think it's better than it being lost forever, don't you think? Um, it's been a while since we've done a new video on the trailer, and that's simply because um, it's been busy. There's been so much stuff going on, and um, I have been working on the trailer, as you're gonna see here in a minute. Um, but it's been very sporadic. It's been uh, an hour here, or half an hour there. So it's taken a while to put together enough content that I thought made it worth it to show to you guys. But um, I did actually, once I got all the content kind of put together, I realized, well, I actually have enough for two videos. So um, this is gonna be part one of two, well, I mean, I guess they're all just parts of a larger video, all these trailer ones are, right? Um, but in this first part, I'm gonna show you guys some really cool stuff that we got for the trailer. So stuff to start the rebuild of the trailer, some really, really neat stuff that we're gonna show you. And also, we found evidence of possibly another paint job. Um, one that is not associated with the show in any way. Man, it is really snowing, isn't it? Well, for those of you who never get snow, here you go, my gift to you. Um, and by the way, if some of you guys, there's been a lot of videos about the trailer. If you've missed any of the videos, we actually have a playlist right on this channel. You can go to that playlist and watch all the videos on the semi-tractor and the semi-trailer in order, get you all caught up if you uh, need to get caught up. So in this video, we're gonna cover uh, kind of those new things we got, this mysterious other possible paint job we found. And for the next video, we're gonna cover the removal of the window, the side window and the aluminum skin around the window. Now you guys can't see it because it's behind the camera, but it's already done. It's part of what I've been working on, but I'm gonna save that for the next video. Just a little, uh, little carrot there to throw out to you to make sure you come back and watch the next video. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get through our opening intro and show you what we've got going with the trailer. Have you checked out our Etsy shop recently? We've got some killer posters showcasing our screen used kit cars available for you to hang in your garage, man cave, bedroom, dining room, coat closet, mud room, billiards room, attic, wine cellar, library, conservatory, indoor pool area, cloak room, or even your butler's pantry. We're also selling exact recreations of the wiring diagram seen on the walls in the semi. So check out our shop by clicking in the link in the video description below. What's that? You don't have a cloakroom? Me neither. There's some magic that's about to happen with this trailer. You know, for the last six months, seven months, it's all been about the teardown of the trailer. And it's taken every second of those last seven months to tear this thing down. But this video is gonna mark the turning point between teardown and rebuild. I know, I can hear you saying already, Joe, you're not done with the teardown. You still have that ugly window on the side of the trailer to take out. I know. But plans are being made in that area 
But in the meantime, I didn't see any reason to wait on this piece because you're gonna love this. This is really cool, what I'm about to show you. So, if you can just wait one second, I'll be right back. I need to grab something. It's really neat. I'm sure building this up, I hope you guys find this neat as well. One moment. Ta-da! The replacement taillight panel. Look at that gem. Isn't that awesome? So, so awesome. And you know, we've got to try and make sure the lights actually fit. Huh, like a glove. I kind of knew they would fit already, but it's nice to have the confirmation once you put all the planning into the design and the fabrication. Isn't that cool? That's so neat. All right, so let's, uh, set that light aside for a minute. I'm gonna use some C-clamps and we'll kind of clamp this in the general location as to where it's gonna end up. And then I'm gonna show you some neat things uh, about this piece. All right, so the question is, can I do this on my own? Probably. All right goes right about there. Okay, right about say that looks good. Let's do one on this side here. That's pretty close. Take a look at that. Let's bring this side up a little bit here. So that is roughly where the taillight panel goes. Now, as you may remember from one of our previous videos, or as a recap, this whole back end was reconfigured later in the trailer's life to accommodate a, a, a more gradual style ramp. And when they did that, they pretty much cut out almost the entire original taillight panel. They moved the taillights to a new panel that hung underneath that footer piece. So we are reconstructing the original taillight panel, which is actually the way it came from Dorsey. So you also might remember in a previous video, we found the original uh, taillight holes in the back. They had been, what's left of them, right? Just, just this piece was left, this, this bottom half, but they had filled them in whenever they rebuilt this footer panel. So if we were to cut this out right here, we would have the original taillight openings. And you can see that here, and you can also see just pretty much how perfectly we nailed um, this redesign piece. Actually, this piece, I don't have it, it, it needs to come over this way about half an inch, but um, yeah, we, we pretty much nailed that, which is really, really awesome. Same with over here, you can see the original, where the original taillights were. So this panel is gonna get grafted in here and it'll get smooth, so this will all appear to be one continuous piece. Um, there were two tail lights, and then they had a stick-on reflector, not that one. There was a stick-on reflector like right up here somewhere. So we'll obviously redo that as well. Now, 
we've got a cutout here. This is not factory Dorsey, but it is original to the show, original style to the show. Um, as you may remember, we talked about how they had a winch mounted upside down right here. In fact, you can even see the remnants of the mounting plate for the winch. Someone had torched this off, but there was a plate that ran across here and it held the winch body in and the spool was right over here. Then the spool, the wires would come through this opening and into the ramp door and that controlled, that winch controlled the ramp extensions, the, the mini ramps that came out of the edge of the actual trailer ramp. So that was the access door to get the cables from the winch spool through and then into the, um, into the ramp door itself. So unfortunately there was no evidence left of that cutout based on, cause you can see where, where they had cut this piece, it was down here. So we lost the, all of the original opening. But I was able to, you know, using screenshots, I knew the size of those, those are four and a half inches. And there was a license plate, the original license plate hung down here, and we know it was centered. So we know the, the width of the license plate, we knew the width of the taillights. I was able to do some measurements and whatnot and figure out pretty closely the size and location of this opening. So I'd say that's, really, really, really close. I'm very happy with how this whole panel turned out. All right, so a couple things. Let's talk about what's missing here. Some of you are probably gonna say, well, Joe, why didn't you just get one piece of metal and get it bent to match these uh, contours? This is original Dorsey, this side up here, not this piece on the side, but this top is original Dorsey, same on the other side. So we need to recreate this step look the whole way across, all right? Whenever, since we have some of the original here, I was able to reach in and get measurements of the, th of the thickness of these pieces, it turns out, this is all not the same thickness of metal. You can see here, I mean, the taillight panel is fairly thick, but then you look up here, and this piece is a lot thinner. So we couldn't bend just one piece and make that work. So um, we decided to do it pretty much how they must have done it, is just take individual pieces and get them welded together. So I have those pieces. Let me, let me kind of lay them in place and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this, which is a, a thinner, a thinner gauge, this is the panel that'll be reconstructed for up top here. And it actually has about an inch lip that will sit on the wood plank floors of the trailer. So that'll go right about there. All right, so I'm gonna tuck it in a little so it doesn't fall. Then for this one inch step down, We've got this piece, so it'll get, you know, it'll get welded to this at a 90 and go in just like that. And then finally, this, which is as th is thicker, it's as thick as this taillight panel, is the lower shelf right here. So that'll go in there. So when our fabricator guy is done with this and smoothing it out, you'll never know it was multiple pieces, but um, it needed to be done this way because of what I just explained. Now, I'm very aware that we're going to be having a 32 pound Trans Am driving up over this. So this has gotta be stout, right? So um, the fabricator knows that too. I'm sorry, I keep talking about the fabricator. The welder knows that too. So um, whenever he comes in here to weld this, he's gonna be adding some additional support and bracing underneath this just to ensure that none of this flexes, um, either with the car going up and down it or even just the weight of the ramp. Cause you know, that ramp is gonna be hinged pretty much on, on this edge of the taillight panel. So we're gonna have a lot of bracing underneath just to make sure that this thing does not 
move. Does not flex, doesn't move, and it's nice and stout. All right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about here was how we're going to incorporate this panel into the trailer, into the existing trailer. All right, so as you see, we do have this bottom piece that is original. And whatever we do, we don't want to cut all of this out because we've got remnants of what was once there. We've got, you know, this, this part of the winch mounting plate. We've got these brackets, which I'll cover here in a second. So I don't want to cut all this out because that's a racing history. You know, the, my original thought with this was, well, I'm gonna have the full panel made and then we'll have our welder come in and slice this panel and just graft it together. But the more, especially now that I have it here and the more that I think about that, I'm not sure that's the best solution. Um, I'm not sure that's gonna look good. So what we might end up doing, as much as I don't want to, we might end up cutting this, this um, original footer panel just down here a little further, keeping this, this part, this part down here cutting this a little further down. That way we don't have to cut this panel and we can just stitch it in down below, smooth the seam, and then that'll be good. So not sure yet which way we're gonna go. I'm gonna lean on the, the welder when he comes out and ask him and see what he thinks the best solution is. But, um, you know, we hate, there's, there's so much that's been changed out of this trailer to made it non-original. Non I hate to cut out more of the originality, but it might, be required in this instance. All right, so instead of doing this next part from the warmth and comfort of my own house, I'm gonna stand out here in the cold and the snow because the semi is out here and I just didn't want it to be alone. All right, so we're going to go over our latest flag Patreon agents, Patreon flag agents, agents, flag, Patreon, one of those things, right? Um, we've talked about this numerous times in the past, but if you guys are new to the channel, let me explain what a flag agent is. We have a Patreon community and it's a group of, of supporters of ours who get behind the scenes, photos, videos, early access to all of our videos that we post on here and um, so much more. It's really, really a great community. There are four tier levels in our Patreon community and our highest tier are our flag agents. And as a flag agent, in a video, you get a shout out from me, which we'll do in a second, and any Knight Rider related questions you have, I will answer in a future video for like as long as you're a flag agent. So um, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, be it at a flag agent level or really any of our levels. There's a link down in the description below and there's also a link in the corner of this video. All right, let's go over our latest Patreon flag agents. First, we have Jason Coggins. Jason, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We've got Mertcon Ozdemer. Hopefully that's right. Mertcon, thank you for your support. Definitely appreciate it. We're very glad you're here. And Carl Acker. Carl, thank you so much for your support. All right, so we've got a number of flag agent questions we gotta cover in this video. And there's more snow. Just, just flying down. Okay, Brandon Treat. I'm building the model kit from Fan Home alongside of you, and I noticed that in issue four on page one, it refers to Garth Knight as Michael Knight's half-brother. But Michael Long was not shown to have any relation to the Knight family prior to being shot, so is that a mistake that Fan Home made, or was Michael and Garth originally meant to be some relation to each other? Would that also explain how Wilton Knight knew Michael Long had been shot in the desert and came to his rescue? Um, yeah, that's a mistake on Fan Home's part. There is no relation, just like it shows in the, in the series itself. Um, Michael Long's face was mangled during, whenever he was shot, reconstructed by Wilton Knight to look like Garth Knight, because Garth was away in prison. Wilton apparently 
wanted Michael to be the son that Garth could never be. So um, there was no relation. They were not um, half brothers or anything like that. Um, and how did Wilton Knight know that Michael Long had been shot in the desert? Um, news reports. Maybe he he had uh, he was looking at Michael Long originally for this role at the foundation and had been following him or, or, you know, kind of knew what he was up to and heard he was shot and then intervened. That's probably it. That's my guess. All right, Steve Gregoriff. How did Kit fully open the door for Michael when he pulls up to him in autopilot? Um, that's the first question. So to answer that question, um, there was usually a guy one of two ways. So depending on which car they were using or whatnot, um, sometimes the stuntman would just be in there, the door would be popped and he would just hold it shut. And then as they were swinging in, he would like push it open. In fact, if you look, there's a great scene in Whitebird where Kit's coming up and you see Kit fling around and the door flies open. And I think you can even see a hand kind of pushing it open. And then the door even starts to close and they cut to um, another scene. But um, yeah, it was just a stunt guy in there just pushing it open. There were no actuators or anything fancy like that. It was literally just a guy throwing the door open. Also, what scanner was used with the John Ward nose, specifically the first intro of Kit in the pilot during the dark where, when he was in the dark warehouse? It almost looks LED. Um, no, it was not LED. It was, um, I think it was 100 watt halogen bulbs. AJ would know for sure. I'm pretty sure it was 100 watt halogens, not the 55 watt we see later in the show. But the reason it looked like an LED, I think, is because the opening was so much narrower that all that light had to shine through that narrow opening, making it look more solid like an LED, if that makes any sense. But no, it was just halogen, just like it was later in the series, just, I think, a higher wattage bulb. Um, all right, Mertcon. What did David Hasshoff think about the driving performance of the 82 Trans Am? I think he had many in 80s for private use and still has one now. Does he have an original screen use kit? Um, okay, so there's lots of questions there. Thinking about the driving performance, my guess would be um, he was not very impressed. Um, now, they did soup up some of the Knight Rider cars. I know they put a 350 in one, they put nitrous in another. So those he might've got a little kick out of, but I'd imagine the stock 305 that those Trans Ams came with, he probably wasn't too impressed, even in the early 80s when performance wasn't what it is today. Um, he's had a number of Trans Ams over the years. In fact, going back to 1983, late 82, early 83, Pontiac gave him two 83 Recaro Trans Ams um, as payment for him going out to car shows um, and being at the Pontiac booth. So he had 83 Recaros. He sold those. I know he got like an 85 or an 86 Trans Am at one point. He's had a couple replicas. Hasselhoff has never owned an original Knight Rider car ever. The closest he ever came was after the show ended, um, he was gifted the front end of one of the original Knight Rider cars. Um, and we own that now, we call it the Hoff Nose. We did a video on it earlier on our channel a couple years ago, so you can check that out. But it's called the Hoff, we call it the Hoff Nose. And it's the front bumper of an original kit with the original scanner in it. But that's the closest he ever got to owning an original kit. Um, Joe and Linda Webb, we were watching the commentary on Give Me Liberty the other day, and I have a question. You were talking about the ramp on the trailer for Kit, and I was wondering where the operator was. Was there a button in the cab, or was there someone in the trailer operating the ramps? Um, based on the special effects guy we talked to after we got the trailer, there was actually guys in the trailer when it was going down. There was a winch mounted up in the upper deck where the, the uh, lounge would be. There was a winch up there and there were guys up there that would operate the, the ramp going down and up from up there. Um, which is kind of crazy to think anytime you saw a kit going in or coming out, there were guys in that trailer controlling that. So, all right, that's all the questions we have for today. Again, if you want to become a Patreon supporter, check out the link down below. So, it's one other thing I wanted to show you, something really, really cool, but to do that, I gotta move some of this stuff out of here first. Let's get these panels out of here.
and take a look at that. You guys know what that is? That is a recreation of the dual battery box that hung down on the rear of the trailer on the passenger side. You can see it. You, you've probably seen it and not realized what it was, or maybe you haven't even noticed it at all, but it was there every time you saw the trailer. These, this tray held dual batteries that powered the winch for the ramp extensions. And just kind of like a lot of the other stuff on this trailer, there was just enough evidence left to show us how this was mounted and give us a rough idea of the size. Now, of course, we know it held two batteries. Batteries are fairly standard size, even you know today versus back then. So we were able to figure out a lot of these measurements just with that alone. But let me show you how this was mounted and then we'll kind of rig it up so you can get the, the full picture. All right, so remember I was talking about these brackets. This was originally connected. It came across horizontally and then had a 90 and down. You can see it was torched off. Well, we also noticed that there was another one back in here. And while the rest of it isn't there, you can see that there's evidence that there was something welded there. So there were these two brackets that came across and down. These were how that battery box was mounted. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have our welder come in here and reconstruct these, keeping the original ends, but we're, we'll have them clean up the ends and weld um, the missing pieces back in. Now over here, obviously, this piece is in the way, this side piece. This all still needs cut out here, um, but then we'll be able to do the, the same bracket over there, same bracket here. And by the way, whenever we do this uh, winch plate, we are going to keep these ends as well and just have them cleaned up and weld the new plate to those ends, just to, again, maintain as much original, originality as possible. All right, so let's go ahead and um, get the battery box uh, temporarily mounted up. So I'll show you kind of what that looks like. All right. Sure could use a second set of hands here. That's all right. Put it right there. Let's open that up a little. Okay, I mean, it's not exactly where it'll go, but it's pretty close. So in reality, I mean, it's pretty close. This will come over about an inch and it'll actually be over, you know, towards the back a little bit more. It'll kind of be centered between here and here, but that's um, pretty good there. So stand back. And you can see how the batteries will hang down there just like they did back when it, when it was original on the show. We'll have the two batteries there to power that winch. And even if you come over here and kind of compare what it looks like now versus a screenshot back then, I'd say that's pretty good. So the only other thing we're gonna to have to fabricate, there was a black box that hung down here with a little padlock on it. Um, we found the mounting holes up um, underneath the trailer for it. So we'll have to get that recreated at some point, but yeah, we are, um, we're cooking here. So the next thing is to 
get our welder out here and get this all reconstructed because once we get this whole back end reconstructed, then we can take final measurements and talk about, you know, getting the door fabricated, which is gonna be, you know, probably the biggest project. You know, we've got the sleeper going, getting this door correct, getting it fabricated, and getting the cross member and the winches and everything. I mean, that's gonna be a huge undertaking, but geez, once that's done, I mean, we are, you know, we're cooking. Hey guys, so we're back with more names to add to the semi wall. It just doesn't seem to end, which is awesome. Um, you guys have been amazing, in case I haven't said that recently. Um, because of your generosity, we are making great strides with the semi tractor and trailer. In fact, I mean, Obviously I can't see into the future, but 2023, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of this year, we have the majority of this project done. No, don't hold me to that because there's still a ton of work. But um, when you look how far we've come in seven months with the trailer, you know, what can we do with 12 months? We'll find out. Anyways, I wanted to highlight the latest names to be added to this uh, wall. Again, if you're not familiar with what I'm doing here, we are, for a $100 donation, you can get your name put on the, the trailer wall for all eternity. This is merely a placeholder. We're gonna transfer all these names onto an official engraved plaque that's gonna be mounted somewhere in the trailer when it's all said and done. So in the meantime, I'm just symbolically adding names here. So if you are interested in getting your name on the semi wall, nightridersemi at gmail.com for PayPal, or you can Venmo us, or just contact us if you need an alternate way to pay, and we can certainly work with you. Um, but uh, if you wanna pay, nightridersemi at gmail.com. Also, if you have any questions about um, the donation, you can email us there as well. All right, let me bring you in closer and show you the latest names to be added to our wall. All right, here we are. These are our latest names to be added to the wall. If you donated and we misspelled your name, let us know. If you donated and you don't see your name, let us know as well, and we'll get that taken care of. And we'll just do a quick pan here so you guys can see all the names, well over 200 names at this point. It's been so amazing, so amazing. All right, so the next piece we got is the header panel. This monstrosity. The header panel goes, well, at the head, at the top, right? Um, you might remember, we've talked about this in past videos, that originally the header at the top only had three, three marker lights in the center. This currently has five, um, and there was a panel that kind of covered it just to give the whole back end a finished look when the door was, when the ramp door was closed, you know, it gave it a nice smooth finish at the top. So that piece has been removed over the years. So we had it fabricated. So let's climb up there and see if this actually fits. So the answer is yes, it fits. However, I can't push it all the way in because the lights that are up there are in the way, which is just a little too bad. But I think that's gonna work out 
just fine. And then we'll have the tail, the new marker lights get mounted out here and these ones get removed. Those were obviously added later. That's pretty cool. And then when the ramp door closes, it comes to right about here and it'll give it a nice finished flush look. It's exciting. Yeah, see, and just so you kind of get an idea, there's the, uh, one of the marker lights that'll get mounted on the edge right there. Very cool. All right, so the next thing we got are replacement roof vents. Trailer had two roof vents in it. You might remember Garth Knight climbing out of one of them. And, you know, that scene in Goliath is the best view we get of the original vents that were there. So these ones that we found are the right size. They have the metal um, lids, just like that one did. Um, they were painted black, obviously, but this is as close as we can find to the original vents that were um, used on this trailer originally. So in those screenshots from Goliath, you can see you know, obviously they gutted this. They took the, the screen out and this bar so Hasselhoff could climb through here, which I'm shocked he was able to climb through here. But you can see that this bracket that's on the lid was still on the lid um, whenever they shot that scene with Goliath. They basically removed this arm, removed the gut, so the door would just kind of flap open so Hasselhoff could um, climb out of it. But um, even more than that, I think they actually, now that I'm talking about it, I think they actually removed the guts before Goliath because way back in season one, you'd see the semi driving down the road and you'd see this door like flapping in the wind. And the only way that could have been done is if this was not connected in here. So um, regardless, we've got two of these. So we got to drill out the rivets holding the plates that um, were used to, you know, to cover the holes. We got to drill out those rivets and then get these installed. So we'll probably do this part in the spring whenever we have to get up there and seal the roof anyways. We'll, we'll do this at that same time. So we've got two of these ready to go. So I wanted to share an interesting discovery with you. Another interesting discovery on the trailer here. Something that I don't know, leaves us probably with more questions than answers. All right, as you know, the trailer was soda blasted a long time ago, removing pretty much all traces of its previous paint jobs. But we found areas on the trailer where they missed when they were sandblasting. And it's provided um, very important clues as to its past in terms of the paint. So I was over here the other day and I was like picking off, you see a lot of this paint is just chipping off because when this trailer was in Arizona sitting outside for a decade or more, this is the side of the trailer that really got beat down by the sun. And because of that, all this paint is just like chipping off, you know, really, really easily. And you peel the chips off and, you know, there's like a little black overspray there, but for the most part, it's all gone. So anyways, I was down here and I was looking, I was in here real close like this, picking stuff off. And something out of the corner of my eye caught my attention. This up in here, this, this area right in here. When this was soda blasted, they didn't get this underside right here. So I peeked under there and started looking and I saw some black paint. And I thought, well, that's great. That's original black paint. But then I saw yellow paint, not gold, bright yellow paint underneath here. And I thought, well, why? Why would there be bright yellow paint under here? And we didn't find yellow paint really anywhere else. Well, I shouldn't say anywhere else because take a look at this. You see this area right here? 
when we got the trailer, these had snaps riveted on for the awning that was over here. So I drilled the rivets out of the snaps and behind all of them is yellow. And at first I thought, well, maybe it was just like on the back of the snaps was yellow and it transferred, which really didn't make any sense. But this is the same color yellow that I found under here. Let me bring you in closer and really show you what I'm talking about. All right, so first we'll start with the snaps. See these snaps? Look how there's yellow behind them. The whole way down, there's yellow. See? And the other interesting thing, you can't really tell on the camera probably, but the paint's thicker here which tells me the snaps were on at the time that this was all soda blasted because you can also see a little bit of black paint there too. See all that? All right, so now if we come back down to under here, look at that yellow paint and it's under I think it's underneath the black. Let me see. Yeah, that yellow paint is underneath the black paint. See it? And it's kind of hard to kind of hard to see. There's some yellow down here also, but then there's a lot of it up in here, and it really kind of runs the whole way up and down this area. You can see some yellow peeking in under there as well. So now, you know, that kind of begs a lot of questions. Why is that bright yellow down there? My thought is one of two things. One, after the show ended and the trailer went into private use, when it was still black, someone painted yellow along the bottom either as a some kind of a high visibility marker so people could see the trailer easier or it was part of a design that um, was on the trailer at some point that's one the other theory is that pre night rider you know this trailer is in 1978 wasn't used on the show until 1982 what did it do for those first four years and what did it look like Maybe it was yellow, at least along the bottom. Certainly a possibility. But these are the only instances of yellow, the snaps and then under there. But it runs the whole way off and on, the whole way under that lip. So what do you guys think? Is that, was that something, you know, later in its life? The only reason I think maybe it was pre night Rider is that yellow paint underneath is behind the black paint. So if it was painted after Knight Rider, you think the yellow would be on top, right? Makes sense. Oh, another mystery to be solved. While we're busy here rebuilding the screen used Knight Rider Semi, another fan of the show, Manuel Blattner, has been building his own, albeit a bit smaller and using plastic bricks instead of steel, rubber, and glass like the full-size version. Manuel built the flag mobile unit and kit out of plastic building bricks last year for the 40th anniversary of Knight Rider, and now there's a possibility that that set will become a reality. A Lego alternative called Mold King is considering producing these sets if we can show them that there are enough fans out there that would like to own this awesome piece. Check out our video description down below for a link to a poll where you can voice your opinion. A little bit of details around the set. It's about 1 16th scale, which is 44 inches long, fully remote controlled, features workable driving and steering both in the semi and kit, full suspension on the truck, opening hood and doors on the truck, um, an extendable landing gear on the trailer. The ramp on the back can be opened by remote control. The side panel opens so you can see the detailed interior just like you saw on the show. There's also an integrated comm link. You open up the top of the trailer and you can pull a comm link out that you can actually wear on your wrist. 
It's just ridiculous. So if you guys are interested in helping this set to become a reality, take a minute, check out the link in the description of this video below, vote and voice your opinion.